This is Matrix Lord 212, and I just saw on Doctor Who TV UK, uh, there was an article about Stephen Moffat, uh, and basically it says that Stephen Moffat is in his 50th anniversary hell. <laughs> it's for February 1st today, and he says, you know, he, it, you know, he's juggling Sherlock Series 3, the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who. Notice how he doesn't say Series 8. Which, you know, when you think about it, if he's used to doing 14 episodes and now he's doing one, what kind of hell is that? Uh, you know, three episodes for Sherlock, okay, he only writes one, an anniversary special. So, he says uh, he feels like he's in hell, he says, but then he says it's hell in a lovely way because I'm working on two of my favorite shows. Uh, not a completely unbiased choice, but it's very difficult. Um, you know, and then he says, there's a lot to do. I'm a bit anxious and scared about getting the Doctor Who 50th anniversary wrong, but I think it's going very, it's going well. Uh, asked where he's at with the script, he, his guarded response is, I'm in a place. There's a place and I'm in it, whatever that means. So, I just, I'm trying to, you know, I feel bad for Moffat that he's going through a lot, but then I'm trying to really think, well, what kind of pressure does he have? How is it more pressure now than before? Because he's not working on 14 episodes plus three with Sherlock's, what makes it 17 episodes. He's working on Sherlock, which is supposedly he's done the scripts, I guess. So the three episodes of Sherlock, and he's working on one. So he's really working on one episode of Doctor Who, one episode of Sherlock, but overseeing Sherlock. So, you know, I I, I want to feel bad, but at the same time, I'm like, well, you just got your whole workload and taken off your shoulders. So you don't have the pressure of Series 8 because it just disappeared. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I really want to feel like, oh, my God, I feel so bad from having to go through that. But at the same time, it's like, you just sacrificed a series, or BBC did, to get make it easier for him. So, you know, what is he going through? I mean, does he have to still worry about Series 8 while he's worried about the anniversary? I mean, does he have to get it ready for 2014? I don't know what's going on. So, another thing, too, like, did they take the budget for 14 episodes, and then they throw it where they split up the pay for all the 11 Doctors? Or, I'm mean, well, not 11, I mean, 3 have died, but... It just, I'm trying to really figure it out, and obviously if it's an hour long, it can't have the 11 Doctors, because that would make it like a jumbled mess. So, you know, I feel that we definitely got the 10th Doctor, David Tennant, we definitely got Christopher Eccleston, but I don't know if we got the other Doctors, and as a fan, I'm very, very concerned about the 50th anniversary. I'm, I'm even more concerned the fact that to get a one hour special we had to give up you know what I'm saying like we had to give up 14 episodes that's like unheard of um, you know what I had to, this guy Sam was cursed me out on the channel and it's like tell me what an idiot I was and that doctor was expensive and you know trying to explain stuff but you know what you had 14 episodes a year. It w you know, if it was too expensive in 2005, well, guess what? They did it again in 2006, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And you know what? I know last year we didn't get 14 episodes, but it's been done that way. So, what are you trying to tell me, Sam? <laughs> you know, and, and then it's like you have launch parties, which you have double because you had the split season. You have coming to America for filming. You, you know, you have all these different things going on with Doctor Who. So, how could you tell me that it's too expensive? Like, what event occurred that had it where we can't afford fourteen episodes out of the blue and only one? And then when you say Doctor Who doesn't make the BBC money, first of all. If Doctor Who doesn't make the BBC money, it's over. Uh, it was canceled back in the day. So, you know, for you to tell me that, you know, they even created BBC America 
they had the money for that because of Doctor Who. So for you to tell me that there's no money when they're the number one on iTunes, that's all over the world. Look at that one. When you need, when you tell me that there's no money where they're not paying two actors for companions, they're paying one now, so they just save money on that. Um, when you tell me this, I think you're an alien from another planet, and you have no idea what you're talking about. I don't mean to be like blasting you, Sam, but you know, I worked in retail where, you know, I had a payroll, I had a staff. I mean, it doesn't compare to Doctor Who. But I had to go to Christmas sometimes on a short staff and everything else. And, you know, I was able to do different things. But never did we ever have a situation where I had to leave somebody alone in the store for Christmas. Um, where the budget was just so cut so bad. So, you know, Doctor Who does make the BBC tons of money. Um, Doctor Who is responsible probably for Sherlock having the money, I believe. And Doctor Who... Um, is, you know, basically generating a state, even Moffat said, why would your showrunner lie, Sam, and say that Doctor Who makes them tons of money, okay? So, by that statement alone from your showrunner, Stephen Moffat, you're wrong in that sense, sir. Uh, and I'm not trying to knock you, I'm just trying to explain to you that sometimes in life, we have people that we encounter that are bullcrap artists. I don't want to say the word S-H-O-T, but they're bullcrap artists. And they wear you down and they keep telling you things until you're completely and utterly brainwashed. If someone tells you that the sky is purple every single day for three, 365 days of the year, and, and you become close with that person, eventually, you know, if you're that of a weak mind, you will believe that the sky is purple. So, um, and that's if you're a weak mind. Um, so you have to understand everybody is trained in this, this century where they just bull crap you to death. Everyone. I'm talking politicians. I'm talking your own car insurance company or anybody. Uh, they just bull crap you to death and they, they twist words around or change the policy around to make it look like you're benefiting, but you're not. So. You know, if this happened to you where, you know, you're a big fan of Doctor Who and you, and you think that by us opening up a can of worms, we're hurting the show. No, not at all, actually, because um, what we're doing is we're, you know, we're making it better because we have all these fans that love Doctor Who so much making videos. And if honestly, sir, that, you know, we were hurting Doctor Who, then we wouldn't get confidential information from reliable sources that say uh, what's going on in the show. I mean, I wouldn't know all these, like, you know, half the things that I know. So it's a respect factor. Yes, um, we criticize, but, you know, I always thought that Stephen Moffat's a genius. That's never in question. I always am confident in with him as showrunner. Um, I do believe that I would like, you know, I wish like it was together with him and Russell T. Davis, but I do like the way he does things. I like the way Steve Moffat has reached America and the way he um, he expanded Doctor Who. I mean, who else brought Doctor Who to America? You know, so he had put Doctor Who on buses in the city street. So uh, I am all for Steve Moffat, but give the guy the tools he needs to succeed. And, you know, when it comes down to why we're missing episodes, where is the money? then unfortunately, you know, he is part of the equation because he is the showrunner. He has said in many interviews that when he needs money for Doctor Who, he goes to the BBC. Sometimes he needs more, sometimes he don't want to use too much. So the thing is that knowing that you have that much power and explaining that you have that much power to the fans in interviews, you do share the responsibility, you do share the criticism of the fans. So, um... You know, and like I said, like, I'm not calling out one of my subscribers. I'm not calling you out, Sam. I'm just trying to let you know that, you know, you have to look at the overall picture. Um, you know, if this continues in this trend, and if everybody is divided, where you accept the fact that it's okay, we got a 50th anniversary special, one episode, then it's very easy for the BBC to say, hey, you know what? Fans were, weren't really bothered by it. Um, you know, they stuck up for us. So 
we don't have to give them 14 episodes. We gave them one episode that year. So we could probably the next year give them four and then take a year off. So, you know, Sam, if, if that's what you want, if that's what you think, you know, you're accomplishing, I, I know you would probably wouldn't want that. You wouldn't want um, Doctor Who to keep fading like a, you know, out of existence. So you got to look at the overall picture, my friend, and, and leave a comment on this video. Uh, you know, and, and honestly, like, you know, you know, the dislike fairies, whoever they are, there's really no need for that. I mean, you could, you could make a cut if you don't if you don't like the show, you don't even have to like it or dislike it. Just leave it alone, and you could make a comment. You could tell me, like you know, Sam told me I was a blah 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 idiot. So, um, and that's fine. I accept that. You know, like I'm not an idiot, but you know, people are gonna have their opinion, and I value their opinion. So, um, but I'm not gonna like tolerate too much cursing on my channel, but. Other than that, uh, that's what my opinion is, really. And it's my opinion, and it's also the large Doctor Who community. I mean, you know, you don't want the show to fall apart. I mean, if I didn't care about Doctor Who, I wouldn't be a part of how many sites now? Four or five sites? I'm part of uh, Say No to the BBC for Cutting Back Doctor Who in 2012 and 2013, and Doctor Who Universe which was created by uh, King Scribe and as the administrators of me, Dr. Freedom and Sexy Blues. I also am a part of uh, the sites that I created, which is TARDIS Travelers and Doctor Who Forever. Uh, also, uh, I've made administrators of Dr. Freedom and Sexy Blues. I am also part of the site I just created called Fight for Who, where I have the administrators, you know, King Scribe, of course, great man, uh, Sexy Blues and Dr. Freedom. Uh, and basically that is, you know, exactly what Say No to the BBC is, only it's a shorter title. <laughs> but um, that, you know, that is, I'm very, very proud of these sites. And uh, I have Matrix Lord 212 on Facebook also where you can go there and um, Check out Dr. Freedom site. Check out King Scribe. I just subscribe now. Check out Sammy Carter. Um, check out Sexy Blues. Uh, check out all my friends. Old Doctor, Young Doctor. Um, you know, a lot of different uh, you know videos out there. Uh, that's the way it goes. 09 has his uh, Doctor Who radio show. Uh, and Sammy Carter has his Living the Dream Stories, which he also does podcasts with me too. And the, the Five Whovian podcast. You got to check that out. So, like, you know, honestly, again, if we didn't care, if I didn't care, I wouldn't have devoted my time at 6.46 in the morning making this video talking to you. So, uh, I got my coffee right here. Cheers. Uh, and I'm going to start my day. I'm going to be leaving soon to go to work. So, before that, I just wanted to say what my opinion is and I wanted you guys to know where I'm coming from alright so um, check out all the videos today and leave your comments below and you know if you are angry or whatever try to like try to use your mind to give some constructive criticism without the vulgarity and the cursing uh, and it will be greatly appreciated on my channel alright take care bye for now